Hey folks here at OS Reviews. So in this video we're doing a more in-depth look at Chrome OS. It's going to be our discussion as well as a brief review I suppose of this operating system and how it really stacks up against Windows in addition to Mac and more Linux OS's on the market. So the first thing you have to know about Chrome OS is it's really designed um, initially at least as this uh, web browser based operating system meant to be designed around Chrome. So if you are using Chrome as a browser then this is a pretty natural uh, you know OS to use just because once you log into the system it's, you can just open up the browser and start uh, where you left off on your PC or Mac. Um, after you sign in with a Gmail account it basically syncs up all of your book marks, all your tabs on your desktop, you know, Chrome, wherever you have on your primary computer, so everything is where you left off. Um, which means that if you're severed from a Wi-Fi connection, if you don't have internet access, there's not too much that you can do on a Chromebook. You can't do very intensive, uh, graphically intensive uh, photo editing or video editing creative tasks, things like that. However, that is slowly changing as uh, Google rolled out an update a few months back that now allows you to install Android apps by default onto a Chromebook. You just search them up and you can download them. So things that you can do on your tablet or your phone um, can now be installed on Chrome OS, which just makes it a lot more versatile and useful. Uh, so you can also play a bit of games as well as do a bit of ebook reading. Offline content can now be done. With that being said, you're still limited in a sense with a uh, Low memory on most Chromebooks. Uh, on the version you see in front of you, this ASUS C200M only comes with 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, and a portion of that is taken up by the operating system. So if you want to do a lot of offline tasks or document editing, you do have to plug in your own thumb drive or an SD card into your Chromebook if you don't want to use cloud storage and you aren't relying on you know cloud-based apps. So if we take another look at the Chrome OS, one of the first benefits I will say is it's a very light OS, which means everything is extremely optimized for the purpose of web browsing, since all the processor and all the memory is just geared for that one single task. So supposedly low configured hardware, you know, Intel Atom, Intel Celeron chips will still run very smoothly with multiple tabs open with video streaming as well as complex websites like the New York Times. And it's also a very fast booting operating system since the first version rolled out. So I can close up the lid of this Chromebook. It goes and within seconds, you know, tapping on the power key once more, for instance, it uh, comes right back up, even from a complete reboot, which is actually what I've done here. So everything is extremely fast, and almost instantly you're reconnected to your Wi-Fi. All of your previously open programs and tasks are there again. Simply just sign in. Another benefit of Chromebook is uh, it still allows you to have uh, guests and multiple people set up to use one unit. So if you have friends and family members over that want to just uh, quickly browse the web, you can tap on Browse as Guest, and that opens up another kind of screen void of all your all of your personal apps and programs and you know you can't actually download more apps onto the computer and once it's done it's going to wipe the memory it's essentially using incognito mode in the browser but for the time being they can then browse the web and everything works you know very well um, and you can see there that's that web browsing itself is extremely fast and fluid and google is of course set as the default web browsing client otherwise if you want to take a quick look at some other things uh, in terms of settings you have to tap on the little bar on the right hand side and that brings up a drawer of things that you can change such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and you can also set the search engine to a different one. You can change the touchpad settings, language settings, um, about the Chrome OS operating system installed on board, version, firmware updates, all of those things can be changed and tweaked. Uh, below here there's access to a task drawer and this is where you can pin more programs as you install them. So for instance if I like files I can drag this, uh, you know if I was actually not in this guest mode, but I can drag it into to this taskbar below here just like I would on Windows or on Mac. Uh, the only thing that's different from Windows is that you can't pin these folders or applications icons directly onto this wallpaper page. So overall it looks pretty sleek and elegant uh, from a user perspective. Very easy to pick up and learn um, you know, for first time computer users even, so that's nice to note. Now, as far as the browser is concerned, as I aforementioned, it syncs up all your data from your pre-existing uh, home PC. So if you have used Chrome before and installed any Chrome extensions, such as Adblock or even you know third-party uh, extensions from a Chrome store, it comes synced 
into your account so everything is right where you left off. So in my case, I installed Adblock already and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was still on here and it worked just fine. Um, otherwise, all of your applications that you'll really be installing is through the Chrome store, even your Android apps. So that's where you have to have internet connection again and then you open up the Chrome store to browse through things such as, you know, uh, Microsoft Word for free um, as an offline quick editor or even other things such as uh, Android applications. So it all is taking you through the Chrome store to download a, download these tasks. And that works pretty well, but again, I recommend plugging in another thumb drive if you plan on installing too many applications, especially those uh, which require uh, maybe games or more memory to operate uh, for offline purposes. So that's something to quickly point out. If we do a quick test, uh, obviously each Chromebook will be different in terms of its performance just because they do have different processing packages underneath the hood, but uh, you can see that in general the trend is that they run very smoothly and well, even for complex and um, you know pages with a lot of flash elements and ads in the background. Um, otherwise, battery life is yet another strong point for almost all Chromebooks. So Chrome OS again is very optimized for this, despite having a pretty standard million milliamp hour capacity for their ultra portables and chrome os laptops and you can expect 7 to 12 hours of continuous battery life which is excellent especially for people who are constantly on the go and don't have access to a ac outlet when they're traveling uh, but one thing i will say about chromebooks though is that the screens can be smaller than your typical windows laptop uh, the average display for instance might run at 11.6 inches uh, and they can of course go up to 15.6 inches but larger displays are harder to find and the quality will vary by the model number and the manufacturer, of course, that you're looking for. But going back to Chrome OS for a quick moment, you know, basically everything is done from the browser, even for more complicated tasks, such as looking through the specifications and the processing uh, hardware configurations of your Chromebook. You have to type in a specific command into the address line, such as, you know, settings, for instance, and that pulls up a more complicated page of uh, things such as your processor speed, the amount of RAM, and that actually can't be directly found through just the settings over here. So there's a lot of little tricks that are hidden in here, all the commands that Chrome is able to perform on a Windows-based or a Mac-based machine is still still can be found here, such as Control C, uh, you know, Control Paste. Um, so all those tasks and shortcuts are still going to be performed. But, but if this is the first time you're using the Chrome browser, uh, it does take a little bit of time to get used to and kind of learn some of these tricks and shortcuts. So overall, that is Chrome OS. I would say that it is a pretty fast and responsive OS. You know, before when it was first released, uh, you know, it wasn't really taken too seriously in the tech community and even in sales because all it could do was browse the web and the pricing wasn't that dramatically different from budget-oriented Windows laptops on the market. Uh, but since then, a lot has changed. It's been able to run Android apps now, which opens a lot more possibilities, but still has a bit of room for development down the road. But in addition, it's retained its strengths, such as its long battery life, as well as an ultra-portable form factor on most of these machines. Um, and also, of course, if you're willing to do a bit more of tutorial work, you're doing a bit more hacking and rooting, you can also install other versions of Linux um, on your Chromebook pretty easily, such as Ubuntu and Dual Boot, um, also maybe even Windows if you want to try that. So uh, it opens up the doors for a lot more possibilities at a very low price point. And in Chrome OS, you know, it does what it's always said to do, which is browse the web really well, and it's very optimized, and boot up times are extremely swift as well as quick. So all in all, I would say that Chrome OS, you know, is slowly evolving into, you know, something that actually works quite well with a growing community of owners, settings that you can tweak, things like theme packages, and OK Google is now even working directly through Chrome. Uh, there's a lot to like, and it's like, it's slowly becoming a stronger and stronger product. So Chrome OS, I think, really does have a room now to evolve and uh, grow even more. It's perfect for students as well as people who don't rely too heavily on Photoshop or other creative uh, elements and software that uh, require heavy processing, but if they're okay with just simple tasks such as web browsing, which, you know, is what the majority of folks do anyways, as well as watching and streaming videos, some word processing and email editing, I think they'll be satisfied now with Chrome OS. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was a closer look at the Chrome OS operating system.